Hello, viewers. Welcome to Charities Bubble. Uh, we have another interesting session that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to thank all my new subscribers, all people who have uh, watched my video and uh, left a comment. And just to remind you that um, after you have watched my video, I leave a comment. You can uh, like us. You can ask a question. And that way uh, we can know how we are doing. We like to hear feedback from people uh, to see uh, what we are doing. If there's something that you want me to talk about, then um, I, can talk it ab I can talk about it in, uh, in one of my sessions. So I'm going to, um, today I'm not going to talk about uh, the green card um, issues. I'm going to talk about um, something that I saw on Kenyan news yesterday. And it really made me sad very very sad um, there was this man uh, who killed his wife and he killed himself in the bedroom so um, I was thinking about it and then I was like um, what went wrong in that marriage until they decided to kill each other or the man decided to kill the wife uh, when I listen to this news, they say that they were having problems. They were having wrangles. So that means that there was the, it was it was a rocky marriage. But before a marriage becomes rocky, and before a marriage um, goes to that uh, point of wanting to take someone's life, there must have been some issues that uh, were there, but they were being uh, ignored. They were being suppressed by each of the partners that couple was very young the man is 42 and the woman is 30 so um, very very young people and very very sad and um, I don't know if they have children and I, I, I if they do have children I feel for those children I really do because um, when you enter in a marriage um, the first question you should ask yourself is why why are you getting married to this person are you getting married because um, of that person is financially stable are you getting married because you love that person are you get, getting married because you're friends with that person and have you even thought if you if, if you are if, if your habits complement each other you see what I mean what are what are the things that you have that are, are the same do you have the same likes do you have what is common what common do you have do, do, does anybody before you get married do you ask yourself those questions some people say it's love at first sight but even love at first sight before you decide to move in with each other at least you have stayed with that person in courtship even if it's two days or three days or one week or whatever days or if it's months what little details did they reveal even unknowingly to you and you ignored? Because how people do not change. People are just the way they were before and is the way they are even when they are 100 years old. So there are those things that you ignore. For example, that person, uh, maybe you go to a restaurant and you are ordering um, food and that person just out of nowhere becomes angry at the at the waiter and they are shouting at the waiter and uh, they are they're just out of place they are out of control that is one or maybe um, you went to the store at, and bought something for them and then you brought it to them uh, they, when, when people are courting or, or maybe or, or, or when people are in a relationship they have that habit of buying each other presents and then when you take that thing to that partner of yours uh, they tell you oh um, I, I, I should have showed you where to go and buy or you tell them um, they, they go even to an extent of asking about the price and they tell you I could have gotten it cheaper in another place those are the little things that uh, make you know that person but you're just like, oh, it's fine. Maybe next time I will get them a better thing. But you don't ask yourself, why didn't they appreciate whatever you gave them in the first place? Or how, do, how, how is that person relating even to other people? 
are they are they kind do they have a uh, humanity in them or do they just treat people like trash because there, there are some people who just treat everybody like trash how what are the what what are the, their views about women um growing in kenya um i i, I always hated to, to to listen to a man who would say that uh women do not have brains and that's a very common term that men use kenyan men use that women do not have brains and you will hear a, a man who is married telling his wife the same thing you don't have a brain and then i wonder why did you even marry that person if they don't have a brain so those are the little details that are gonna know that the space that you are in at that moment it is not the right space then another thing that maybe would have gone wrong in that marriage and they ended up killing each other is communication when you stop communicating when you stop stop bringing the issues on the table and talking about them because you can nobody uh, unless someone is lying there is no one in in this world who has a marriage that they do not um they don't have uh, problems one here and there you will annoy each other your partner will do something that you do not like but the power comes in when you sit down and talk about it but if you are the kind of uh you are in the bedroom you're texting and the other person is in the living room you cannot face each other now that is trouble and unless you start having those conversations start having those conversations the earlier the better the earlier the better because if you don't 10 years into the marriage you're not going to be talking to each other you will be sending friends emissaries to come and solve your problems <laughs> so make sure that communication is going on in your marriage another thing i believe and um, i don't know but it's good to marry a person who is your friend think about your best friend and what you don't want to do um to to hurt them there, there should be there should exist some friendship look for that friendship and start thinking is can i call this person my friend can i lean on this person because there will be those moments that will really 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 need support for that person from that person it can be financially it can be um uh, emotionally are you able to lean on that person and feel comfortable that that person is going to help you go through whatever you're, that you're going through in life you should be able to ask that question you don't want to get married to a person who you tell something and they just shrug it off or they tell you that I am going to do it um at my uh, at their own time. You want to get you want to know that you are you are getting attention from this person. Regardless of whether you have kids or not because kids is another institution. There are, there are those moments that you have to focus on your partner. You still need to do your parenting but there are those moments that you have to focus on your partner and what what they are going through because getting married doesn't mean that the one person gets uh, absorbed on the other person's uh, space no you are two individuals you are two different individuals with two two minds and you should be able to know that that person is going to be there for me if that person is not there for you then what's the point hmm? what's the point like really what's the point there is no point. Hmm? Then you have this other person who has this habit of just putting you down, criticizing you, talking um anyhow they want about you. Even if you wear a nice dress, they do not they cannot even compliment you and tell you you look nice. Everybody deserves a praise here and there. But if you have this man or this woman who doesn't appreciate anything. Hmm? Or if it's a man and they brought you a present, maybe it's a, a silver ring or a chain. You tell them, um, I, my, my, my dream chain is a, a golden one. Or my dream ring is a golden one. So that means you don't appreciate the little effort that they did to bring you that one. 
What does that do to a relationship? When you're put down, you know, when you, when you keep on suppressing, uh, it's, like, uh, it's like a cat or a dog for those who have pets. Now, if, you have the, if your pet comes to you and you don't pet it, you kick it, that pet is going to go back. If it comes the second time and you, you, you kick it away, the next time it's not going to come back. It's, it's not going to come back. If you don't give it that love, that appreciation, it's going to be there, but it sits at the corner. It doesn't come to you. That's an animal. What about a human being? A human being that you do not appreciate their efforts. And I'm not even talking about whether you are rich or whether you are poor. Even when you are poor. Hmm? You know, um, at home, um, I know that um, maybe you don't, maybe a man doesn't have money. And uh, they want their family to, to have some meat. Right? So, because the, of the little that they had, they say, um, because I don't have enough money to buy like the, 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 the regular meat, I'm going, I'm going to buy matumbo. Right? And you bring to your wife to cook. And then your wife is like, hmm, is it the only thing that you could bring? Why can't you buy uh, meat? Like those little things. Or maybe you have cooked your food hmm? and you have brought it to the table. And then that man is like, you put a lot of uh, water in this food or you put a lot of salt. That they do not, they do not, the word thank you and please does not have any space in their narrative. That person who doesn't appreciate you. We are human beings and we thrive by being praised. So if you find out that your partner does not praise you, they do not, they do not compliment you, and maybe they were complimenting you before you got married, hmm? but now they, are, they, they don't compliment you anymore. Hmm? Especially if you have, uh, if you go through childbirth, some people uh, maintain the, the, the girlish figure that they had. But some of, some of us, <laughs> we put myself there. <laughs> Your body just goes out of control and you try everything and then you're like, okay, whatever. I'm fine for now. I'm at this pace. Hmm? You don't even have time to go to the, you want to go to the gym, but you don't even have that time to go to the gym. Hmm? At that time, because there is so much that's going on in your life that you don't even have, you, 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 at that time you don't have it. It's not that you won't have it, and it's not that you don't want to create time, but sometimes you can be overwhelmed. And the, the, uh, women's body change. And then this man starts telling you that you're fat. <laughs> you're like, oh, goodness, really? Like, they stop compliment. they start... Telling you derogatory words, words to put you down. Hmm? They even put you down in front of their friends. Oh, that's that, that's that, that that shows that there's trouble in your marriage. And unless you address that, if you keep quiet and you say, "Oh, this person is gonna change. Oh, maybe if I if I buy this one," how many women are killing themselves going to the gym and uh, it's, some, it's not even working because you're going to the to the you're going to the gym. You're stressed, you're depressed, and then you end up gaining all the weight. So unless that partner is able to appreciate, and I'm not saying that people should not go to the gym, no, I did say that. <laughs> what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that um, just be able to appreciate each other. Hmm? If you don't tell, don't, don't tell your partner that they are fat, just. Uh, look for an idea or just look for space or time and tell them that can we be going to the gym together see what i mean say it in a nice way another thing that maybe would have gone wrong is one of those people one of those two people was doing something very wrong maybe there was beating maybe there was insults that were being uh, thrown at each other and then at the end of the day Maybe when they sat down and maybe tried to have a conversation, the person who was wronged started taking blame, blaming themselves. You start blaming yourself. Hmm? You start making excuses. Like, um, maybe it's because I did this, 
Maybe that's why um, uh, he, he hit me. Maybe it's because I did not do this. Next time I am going to do this so that he appreciates. That person, even if you, you bring him all the gold on the earth, that person is never going to appreciate you. So stop taking the blame for your partner. Everybody must be accountable to what they are doing. Actions have consequences. Sit down and talk about those consequences. Do not let, let's assume, um, and, uh, and, and this one I'm talking about Kenyan men, because um, that part really pisses me off. Like your man, you've been married for like, um, close, I've been married now close to two decades. So I know what I'm talking about. And I've been with my husband all this time, and then my husband decides to go and get a younger girl, right? And then they tell me it's because I am not working on my weight. You see what I mean? That is what I mean. Every action has a consequence. Sit down about it. Sit down and tell him about it. Ask him questions. I understand that in that, in that marriage, the lady was, was pregnant with another man's child. What brought into that infidelity? Hmm? What makes you uh, think that that other person stopped having feelings because of, uh, of life changes? They did not stop. And unless you talk about those consequences and not saying that it's because I don't have money, that's why my wife went for, an, for another guy. No. Don't, don't take the blame for yourself. Sit down, talk about it, because every action has a consequence. And know how to go the way forward. The other thing is dishonesty. And this is, a, this is big. You have those little secrets that you are hiding and you don't want your partner to know. But your friends know. <laughs> you know, um, I had this friend of mine and uh, she had been married for a while. And uh, she went ahead and bought some land for herself. And she never told her husband. <laughs> she didn't tell <laughs> She didn't tell him. So the funny thing is that, um, so the husband was driving around, um, he was, he had given another guy a lift, a ride, so they were driving around that place. And then when they were driving around, that friend asked the husband, oh wow, I, congratulations, you bought that piece of land, it's very good, it, it's a tea plantation. And then the guy was like, what? <laughs> and then the friend was like, don't be secretive, why are you hiding, if it's your land, it's your land. And then well, the man was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then the friend was like, you guys just bought that land. Hmm? You guys just bought that land. I've even seen your wife there several times. The man was shocked. <laughs> he was like, oh my goodness. So when he went back home, oh my goodness. There was hell in that home. Hmm? And subsequently, um, later, I know, I know they might have had other issues, but maybe, who knows, because they're not, they're not together um, right now, they separated. Who knows if that secret was one of the things that made, um, made them to, to, to separate? Because when there is not trust in marriage, not even marriage, if, if, if even your employer cannot trust you, do you think that they are going to keep you on that job? Heck no, they will not. The same case with the marriage. There has to be honesty. There has to be honesty. It is when you get married, you become one, but that doesn't, that, 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 you become one person, you become one institution. One institution. Sorry, not one person, one institution. Now that one institution is like a company. Hmm? A company uh, has a CEO, it has workers, but all of them, regardless of whatever, every, every, every position that, uh, ever, uh, that that person has in the, in the institution, they contribute. Even the person, even the janitor, even the person who, 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 um, who, cooks, uh, who cooks in the kitchen, even the, the person who is sitting there as the manager, everybody is making a contribution in the marriage. So if your contribution, the one that you're supposed to be making in the marriage, you're doing it by yourself in a secret, and then it comes out in the open, that brings problems. 
It brings a lot of problems. So it's a high time we started being honest with each other. It's not bad to have a separate account, yes, but let your spouse know. Let your spouse know and uh, be in a position to discuss this is what is going on. If you have a family member that you, that you want to help, discuss that with your spouse. Have a budget, especially us who come from home. We have to, to take care of our family members. It's a different narrative here in the U.S., because yeah, every man is for himself and God is for us all. But at home we have to take care of our parents. We have to take care of some, we have to take care of them. But bring that conversation on the table. Say this is the budget, this is how much we can give. Because you still have a life to live, you still have your kids to care, take care of, you still have your bills, your life doesn't stop because you want to help your people. No, it doesn't. But unless you sit down and talk about it, have that conversation and know this is the match that we will use to help. Don't do it in secret. Don't buy land for your brothers and sisters in secret. Or if it's a man, don't buy land with your, with your, with your, <coughs> with your family members and you're not telling your wife. No. Sit down and talk about it. Those trust issues do not them let them bring trouble in your marriage. Then the other, the other thing that I, I think uh, is, is, is very important and um, the, it might bring uh, trouble in marriages when you don't have time for each other. Out of sight, out of mind. So if you do not create time, life is so busy. <coughs> Everybody is busy. Now like my own example, I work at night, I, a, a night shift, my husband works during the day. We have kids to take care of. This is not Kenya that you're gonna hire a nanny, you cannot afford to hire a nanny unless you're very rich. So you have to look for a schedule that both of, in, um, each one of you will be home with the kids when the other one is working. But you have your days off. So those days off is when you look for that time, that very crucial time that you have to see, just for both of you, not for the kids, not for friends, both of you, sit down. Talk about issues. Talk about what's going on in each other's life. Ask each other how they are doing. Do not assume that they are okay. No. Ask them, how is your work? Yeah. And even if your partner is not the talkative type, Start, it always starts with the first step. Start those, those conversations. The more, you the, the more you open up, the more they will feel the need to relate with you and to, go, to have that conversation. So have time for each other. Have time to wind down. Here in the US, they have the, the date night. There's a date night where you go out with your spouse and you spend time with each other and you don't go with your kids. How many of us are, 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 are doing that, especially at home? How many, how many men, how many, <laughs> how many men even want to be seen with their wives? <laughs> they just don't, I'm like, it's crazy. Be proud of that person that you married. Hold their hand and tell them it's okay. Even when, they are, when, when, when life is not good, even when you are having difficulty in the family, just know that, just let your partner know that you are there for them. And that, 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 that is vital. But if you do not have time for each other, then you don't have time to be intimate with each other. So, if you sit down and think about all those issues, you're like, why is this marriage going? So um, it's very important, very, very, very important to have time for each other. You get to know each other. You get to have fun each other, with each other. It's very, very, very important. The other thing is when you're jealous, <laughs> when you're jealous of your partner. Now this is crazy because, uh, it's, like I said, it's an institution and everybody has something to bring on the table. So the more the merrier, the more, uh, the more talented your partner is, the more successful your partner is, the better space you are in. 
But, um, and I'm going to relate this, um, men have ego. And uh, that's how they are created by God. And uh, women, on the other hand, when you're married to a man and you become more, more successful, you tend to put down that man, which uh, is very wrong. Because uh, when you tend to put down that man, men do not like being put down. <laughs> oh, no, they don't like to be put down. A man is the head of the family. So make sure that you keep him in that position of the head. Regardless of how many millions you're making out there or whatever you're doing out there, always know that the man is the head of the home. So you have to respect him. You have to treat him as your husband. It doesn't change. Just don't make, do, do not let anything change because of success. The same case with the husband. If you got, uh, if you got, um, you, you, your, your financial path is, is better than your wife's. Do stop degrading this woman who has stuck with you all these years and going to look for the younger ones. Because the, your, your wife is out of, she, she has added weight. <laughs> and you want to look for a slay queen. I hate this law that was passed in Kenya of men marrying many wives. Th that, that is brewing a lot of trouble. Because uh, all the girls now want to get married to men who have money. Why not look for your own younger men and you start from scratch? Because it can be done. Start from scratch and God will bless you. Don't go destroying other women's homes. Saying that uh, you are, uh, that, uh, it's called the, the, the small house. It's wrong. It's very, very, very wrong. Uh, the other one uh, is uh, when family comes in and they start criticizing your partner and you let them. You listen to what they're saying. You should be able to safeguard your marriage and at the same time safeguard your family and have boundaries. Okay? Have boundaries. If I have a problem with my husband, believe me, I am not going to go and tell my mother. I will not. Because that's my mom. She's going to side with me whether I am wrong or right. I'm not going to tell her. No. If it becomes bad, then I'd rather go to a marriage counselor. But I am not going to go to my mother. And I believe the same case applies to him. Because I have a very good relationship with my husband. A very, very, very good relationship. So, if, um, if trouble comes, and trouble will come. I've had my own troubles in my marriage. But we have always found a way to sit down and talk about them. Because that's the key. Talk about it. Know how each other is feeling. Tell your partner the, 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 the things that you don't like about them. Let your partner tell you what they don't like about you. And listen. You have to be a very, a, a good communicator must, must be a very good listener. But some of us, when we are told our faults, we shoot our mouth down up and we, we, we talk the way we want because we don't want our faults to be recognized and to be addressed. You have to be able to listen and work on that. The other one is peer pressure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I came here to the U.S., I had a, this lady who told me, here in the U.S., no man can bring you problems. If any man brings you problems, huh? you just divorce them. It takes um, less than a month for you to get a, a divorce. I was like, oh, my gosh. So what are your friends telling you about your marriage? What are you following that they are doing? Because when you sat down, when you got married, there are things that you know your partner doesn't like. And there, there are things that uh, you don't like from your partner. So if your partner does not want you to go out by yourself, <coughs> partying there, then, you, then, then don't go. We, come from, we, we, are, we, we came from a different background, a different space. And our upbringing in Africa is not going to change. We have our institutions. But then, when people go to a foreign country, they want to adapt. Or even people in Africa, they want to adapt um, the Western ways. That is not our ways. You have to be able to be, to do what is best for your marriage. 
if if it's wrong address it to your spouse sit down talk about it and know these are the this is what we can do and these are the limits and these are the boundaries that way you will be able to have a good marriage talk about it talk about those all those issues do not put them covered up because when they w w w when when that pot is full it's like uh, you know like uh, when, when when you cover a pot and there is no aeration the, the pan, the cover of the of, of the pan just um, falls. It's, it's pushed out by steam and it falls and there's a lot of steam. That's the same case that happens in a marriage when you just, all those problems, you're just keeping quiet, you're just ignoring them, you're just I ignoring the red flags. And then at the end of the day, they explode. That's why you find people are killing each other, left and right. If maybe that marriage, if they had sat down and talked about it, if they had observed keenly, these red flags that were in that marriage, I believe those two people would be alive today. And I'm talking about this for someone who is in such a relationship. Because we are not, uh, the way we were brought up, especially women, um, we were not uh, brought up to stand up for ourselves. But you should be able to stand up for yourself. If it is strong, it is strong. Do not take blame for it. And if it's not working, don't stay there and be killed. Get out. There is life after marriage, uh, after divorce. There is life. There is always life after, out there. There is life after di divorce. So don't stay there. Don't wait for for a man to shoot you or to do whatever he wants with, or cut your hands. There's another story about a man who had cut the lady's hands. Another one who just mutilated the lady's face. We keep up. I keep up with. Uh, I love to watch news in Kenya, so I, I like to know what's going on because my people are there. And it makes me sad because every time that I watch news there, people are killing each other left and right, married couples. And if, 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 you, um, if you feel that um, there is something wrong, seek help. It can be, you can be depressed. There's so much going on in life that the depression is just creeping on every li left and right. Mental health is a thing. So if you feel like you're in that, in that space, you're feeling that you want to be isolated, you, you're not doing the things the way you do regularly, go see a professional and get help before you end up killing your spouse and address these issues. So unless we get to that space when, where we are able to talk about these things, our marriage is not going to work. It's going to end up to be a toxic relationship. You are, you are going to end up dying costing your life and just so you know when people die they don't come back so you have to know very well what you are doing in that relationship so once again uh, thank you for watching this space charities bubble um, watch our video like us comment um, and ask a question and uh, uh, till next time uh, I wish you a good time and God bless you Thank you.